Inflation is coming in hot and will put pressure on the Federal Reserve to get more aggressive in raising interest rates. Will they act so aggressively to rein it in while at the same time crashing the housing market? That's what we're going to look at in today's video. Let's get into it. Welcome to the first update to our series on when is the housing market going to crash. In our recent conclusion to that series, I found that the median home price could see a 28% decline by the end of 2022 if the Federal Reserve had to get as aggressive as they did back in the 1980s to fight inflation and bring it down. I mentioned in that video that I would release updates to my market crash scenario as new data came in, and this week we got an important new data point for my model. The Bureau of Labor Statistics released their report on consumer prices for March, which showed inflation coming in hotter than expected and an acceleration over the February inflation measurement, which came in at 8.5% in March compared to 7.9% in February. The March figure was also the fastest rate of inflation since December 1981. The big question here is what does this mean for home prices going forward? And that is what I will answer in today's video. If you're new to this channel, my name is Eric and I am a professional private sector economist in addition to being a licensed real estate agent and I bring a unique skill set to YouTube that you'll be hard pressed to find on other channels. Like in our last video on the topic, I'm going to give you the answer up front since many of you don't want to stick around to watch this whole video. But if you want more details on how I got the answer or want to get a more in-depth update into everything that's happened in all the other areas that we're watching in terms of what's what things are looking like in the months ahead, make sure to stick around to the end of the video. The big takeaway from the new results is that a big downturn in prices now appears more likely with this higher rate of inflation from the government report this week. Here's what I found when I plugged the new inflation data into my model. As previously stated, median home prices could see a 28% decline by the end of the year if the Federal Reserve had to get as aggressive as they did back in the 1980s to bring it down. And what I mean by this is that back then they had to overshoot the rate of inflation by 20% to bring it down. With the new inflation data today, we see a bit steeper decline, but not by too much. The new result in that severe scenario shows a 32% decline versus the previous 28% estimate by the end of the year. And this is because the Fed would have to increase their FUD fund Fed funds rate by 1.75 basis points compared to 1.5 from the last estimate to bring down that higher rate of inflation, which would then put upward pressure on mortgage rates, making homes more unaffordable and prices would have to come down more so that the monthly housing payment as a share of income stays at the historical upper bound of 35%. Now, that's a bit of a mouthful, and if you want a breakdown of how this model works, check out that last episode in our housing crash series. I'll leave a link to it in the description down below. The next hard data points we'll be watching closely will be the release of housing market data in the coming weeks that will show us the latest trends in housing market supply, housing market demand, and we'll also be watching closely as the Federal Reserve holds their next meeting on May 3rd and May 4th to decide on any changes to their Fed funds rate. We'll be providing you with more updates as those data points come in to let you know what's going on in my market crash scenario, whether the new data is pushing a crash out further, bringing it closer, or like today, if it's staying the same in terms of timing, but is increasing in intensity. So make sure you're subscribed, if not already, and hit that notification bell down below so you know right away when those update videos come out. If you're one of those folks that just came for the answer and will be leaving now, please give this video a thumbs up to support the channel and share it with others to help us grow. For everyone else, here's what we're going to do for the remainder of the video. Last time I identified these factors that will influence what could change the results of my market crash scenario. So today we're going to go through each one of them and I'll update you on what's been happening in each area. 
For some, we have new hard data to work with, and for others, we have more anecdotal information circulating in news reports. And both can give us an idea of what is coming down the road. Starting with inflation, it was the big data point that came out this week. As mentioned, the consumer price index increased by 8.5% in March compared to the same time period a year prior. What this did to my market crash scenario model was to move the amount of Fed funds rate increases from 150 basis points in our last video to 175 basis points. Whether the Fed does this or not is up in the air, but if they are serious about bringing inflation down before it does too much damage to their economy, they may need to. Which brings us to the next factor, the Fed's response to the latest inflation report. The Fed's next meeting to determine their path of rate increases will be May 3rd or May 4th, with the press release and conference by Fed Chairman Powell on May 4th. This will give us a big clue as to how willing they are to get aggressive to fight inflation. If they wanted to try to bring inflation in for a soft landing, so to speak, they might stick with the 25 basis point increase. If they up the ante a bit and raise their Fed funds rate by 50 basis points, this would be an acknowledgement that they need to get serious about reigning in inflation. From the minutes of their last meeting in March, there seems to be a lot of support around the idea of a 50 basis point increase at their next meeting, and public statements from Fed officials recently have definitely supported the idea that they're willing to embrace Fed fund rate increases in the 50 basis point range, or even higher if the situation merits. With this week's inflation numbers coming in hotter than expected, it definitely makes the case for them to get more aggressive. Markets are watching the Fed statements closely and investors are placing their bets that the Fed will hike rates by at least 50 basis points. With markets acting now on what they expect to happen in the future, mortgage rates have surged in response. In our last video, one of our viewers commented on mortgage rates hitting 5% now and one of the scenarios I built had mortgage rates hitting 5% by the end of 2022. This really highlights how forward looking the markets are right now and pricing in perceived future action by the Fed. My scenario where mortgage rates hit 5% by December assumed the Fed would raise the Fed funds rate by 25 basis points at each meeting as they did in their March meeting. Essentially, investors priced that into the bond markets, which heavily influenced mortgage rates, and mortgage rates got to 5% before the Fed could even finish out their meetings for the year. If we see them raising by 50 basis points at their May 4th meeting, we could likely see mortgage rates get close to 5.6% before the end of the year, which is where I had rates ending up in the second scenario. And while we don't have any new real estate market data in yet, we have some pretty good clues where things are headed in the next month or two. The rising mortgage rates are already sapping housing demand in a noticeable way. A recent report by the Mortgage Bankers Association found mortgage demand was down 40% at the end of March compared to the prior year. It appears sellers are taking notice of this weaker demand as well. Last week, it was reported that Redfin found about 12% of homes for sale had a price drop during the four weeks ending April 3rd. CNBC attributed this to the rising mortgage rates by putting pressure on buyers, and I would definitely agree with that. On the supply side of the market, we are also seeing signs of an increase in listings from sellers not wanting to miss out on selling their home at current record high prices. The March data on the real estate market could be one of the more critical data releases that we've seen in some time for real estate. That is when we see if these anecdotal soft data points are significant enough that they're moving the needle in the broader market. But for now, it seems like the recent upward trend in mortgage rates is having a real effect as housing payments as a share of income are bumping up against that historical upper bound of about 35%. So let's take a look at our market crash scenario and see what the latest inflation data did here. As mentioned in the beginning, our third scenario, where the Fed was assumed to raise their Fed funds rate by 150 basis points at each meeting originally, has now changed to 175 basis points. This is because the higher inflation rate that was reported this week would necessitate a higher Fed funds rate to bring it down based on our study of what they had to do in the 80s 
to bring high inflation down then. This would then lead to projected 8.4% mortgage rate by the end of the year, which we mean home prices would have to decline by 32% in order for the housing payment share of income to stay within the 35% upper bound. If this is the first time you're watching one of these videos, make sure to check out our last video on when is the housing market gonna crash for more elaboration on how I built up this model. Now, at this point, you may be asking, well, what if the Fed just raises rate by 50 basis points each meeting, and that would be enough to rein in inflation? Well, in that scenario, mortgage rates would reach 5.6% by the end of 2022, and home prices would still decline by 9.5% in order to stay within historic affordability limits. This could be the more likely scenario as the Fed may not want to risk crashing the economy along with the housing market and a 9.5% decline in home prices is probably something they could live with as it's more of a correction and not necessarily a crash in prices. So there you have it. Our update on the big question, when is the housing market going to crash? Which is sadly starting to turn into the question of how much is the housing market going to crash? Let me know what you think in the comments section down below. Are we even going to see a crash? Do you think the Fed can pull off the infamous soft landing with messaging and minimal rate hikes? Or with mortgage rates surging faster than the Fed is acting because the markets are getting ahead of it all, will the 30% or more home price crash happen sooner than the end of the year? Let me know down below. But I hope this video has been useful for you. And if it has, please give it a thumbs up. Share it on social media to support the channel. It is greatly appreciated. And if you haven't already, make sure you're subscribed. Hit that notification bell down below so you know right away when our next update video comes out. I'll be releasing at least one update video per month but it will likely be more frequently than that. There are some critical data points rolling in over the next few weeks, so you won't want to miss our next update. I'm also going to be doing some deep dives on regional real estate markets. The first one up will be on Austin, Texas, which I found to be one of the hottest metropolitan markets in the nation. So we'll have lots of great content that you'll want to be on the lookout for. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you in the next video.